Go shopping for some oranges and I'm sure you'll get them in a red mesh bag. You'll rarely see them lying around without one of those. It's pure marketing. And that color isn't a random choice. When packed in a red mesh bag, oranges appear more orange, fresher, and more appealing to you. So you're more likely to buy them, right? Lemons are usually sold in green mesh bags for a similar reason. If you pack them in red, they'll appear more orange. Green goes better with yellow and makes those lemons stand out. You open a bag of chips and find it half empty, or half full if you're an optimist. Frustrating, I know. But I figured it's not because the manufacturer wants to get more cash out of you. The extra air helps to protect your chips from any damage. If the bags were filled to the brim, you'd get chip dust instead of chips after their transportation. A raspberry-flavored ice pop is typically blue, not pink, or red, which both would be more obvious color choices. Well, imagine you're making a pack of popsicles. You can pick green for apple flavor, pineapple or lemon is yellow. They're strawberry, so it should be red. Cherry, well, red again. Watermelon? Red. And now raspberry. Yeah, red. But four reds are definitely way too many, and people won't tell the difference between them easily. So, at first, both strawberry and cherry flavors were red, but of different shades. The watermelon one was pink. They made the raspberry ones of a deep, dark red dye. Then, scientists proved that that dye might be dangerous, so it was banned. Blue was another free color option, but there's no blue fruit or berry except for blueberry. And it's not a very popular flavor, so manufacturers started to paint raspberry blue. Sometimes, they call it blue raspberry. But it's just a lab thing that doesn't naturally exist. If you buy a clock or see a picture of it, it'll most likely show 1010 by default. The only reason behind it is that it just looks nice. You can see both hands, and they don't overlap. Also, it's symmetrical and nice, and it frames the 12. And finally, it makes a smiling shape that gives off a positive vibe. Mattresses usually have those decorative stitching patterns on them. Mattress manufacturers make a limited number of different mattresses. And the only way to make them look different is to come up with a fancy stitching pattern. Two mattresses of different companies might be the exact same quality, but cost differently. Most people will never know it and will decide that different patterns mean something in terms of quality. So, when shopping, don't mind the pattern at all. Cheese has holes. In most types, they're small, but they can also be huge. Cheese is made by adding bacteria to milk, and the holes are the result of it. Those bacteria consume lactic acid and release little gas bubbles. They're trapped in the cheese, and then they pop, forming those little holes. The size of holes depends on the production temperature and its acidity. Swiss cheese has extra large holes. It's made at a temperature of around 120 degrees Fahrenheit and incubated at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 to 7 days. So the cheese is very soft, and the bubbles grow especially big. All coins have ridges, but have you ever wondered why? At first, all coins were linked to a silver standard. The amount of silver used in a coin was proportionate to the value of the coin. So, a $1 coin had way more actual silver in it than, say, a quarter. The edges were made reeded for security reasons. Once, it was a coin element that made a coin harder to reciprocate. It also prevented another kind of fraud. People would shave off a bit of metal from the edges of coins. It would be just a little so that no one would notice the difference. But if you did it to many coins, you'd get enough precious metals to sell. Reeded edges made it impossible. If someone tried to shave them off, the ridge would become smooth, and it'd be obvious to anyone that a coin had been tampered with. Nickels and pennies didn't have them because they were made of inexpensive metals, so there was no sense in protecting them. Now, no one makes coins out of silver, but the ridges are still there. When the governments started to produce new coins, they didn't see a point in changing the coin-making equipment, and they just kept the reeded edges. If you ever played billiards, you must know that green table well. 
The game originated around the 14th century, five centuries before basketball. Back then, folks didn't have pool tables, of course. Instead, they were playing it outside on the green lawn. Later, people moved the game indoors so they could play it even when it was raining. And they kept the nostalgic green to give it some lawn vibes. Medical workers usually wear a uniform that is a shade of blue or green. There's a reason for it. Before the 20th century, they were wearing their regular clothes, even when performing surgery. With the development of medicine, people started to pay more attention to matters of sterileness. So they started to wear a uniform, and at first, it was white to signify purity. The problem was that some stains were very hard to wash off from the white uniform. The color white would become greenish. So, it made sense to make the uniform green or blue. Besides, surgeons mostly focus on red colors during work. Blue and green are exactly the opposite side of the spectrum. So, if everything else is greenish blue, the red becomes even more distinctive. Wash your hands with plain white soap, and you'll see some white foam. Wash them with a blue, red, yellow, green, whatever color, and the foam is still white. The reason for it is scattered light. Any light rays that falls on an object either get absorbed or are reflected back. Things that absorb all colors appear black. Those that reflect all colors are white. A red bar of soap is red because only the red color reflects back and the other colors are absorbed. But once you produce some foam, it's made of many little bubbles. Each of them scatters light in different directions, so it looks white. Do you see something when you rub your eyes? These colors and shapes are called phosphenes. The reason why you see them is that when you're rubbing, you increase the pressure in the eyeball and activate the neurons of the retina that process visual information. Once they're activated, your brain interprets it as if you see the light and it tries to actually see it. Ever wondered why you have black circles around your eyes when you're tired? The skin under the eyes is very thin, so the blood vessels are very close to the surface and you can see any difference easily. When you lack sleep, your skin gets paler and the blood vessels are even more visible. So, you can see those dark circles showing through the skin. Also, with age, your skin naturally gets thinner, so that's why older people tend to have dark circles. But if you're young, try to get more sleep, and they'll be gone. You say Germany, the Spanish say Alemania, and the Germans say Deutschland. And it sounds like three different countries, but it's just one. If someone's name is Olivia, she will be more or less of Olivia everywhere. So why do countries have different names in different languages? Countries have existed for a long time. Back when people from different countries couldn't communicate and spoke different languages, they'd refer to some territory the way they referred to it, never agreeing with other countries, and the name stuck. A German tribe called Alemanni once lived in what's now Switzerland. So I guess that's why the Spanish started to call the land Alemannia. Then the Germans were united and called themselves Deutschland. In English, the pronoun I is always capitalized. Even the linguists don't know for sure why it's so. At least yet. I comes from the German Ich. During the time it evolved from Ich to Ich and later to I. Some theorize that a little I appeared to be too insignificant in a sentence, standing on its own so it started to be capitalized to be more distinctive. If you've ever seen a behind-the-scenes video, you might have noticed that they click that clapperboard before each scene. This clap helps a lot at the stage of editing. The film and the audio are recorded separately, and when they're synchronized, the clapperboard makes that brief clap at the very beginning of a shot scene. And it's easier to find where the scene starts to add the audio. Another reason is to give more details on the filmed piece. They add information about the scene and take number, the filming date, the camera angle, and other important stuff to the clapperboard that makes it easier to go through hundreds of video pieces later.